Oh, it's Friday. And you know what that means. Off the rails Friday. Nick Kiprios, Justin Bourne, Sammy McKee, Derek Brandeo, who reminded me it was Friday. It was seconds before the show. You usually think it's Friday by Wednesday. Yeah, which is way more feedback than I get from our producer, Sammy McKee. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? Well, he's just... Derek's looking after me. Oh, you, I have to tell you it's Friday? Yes, on occasion oh, yeah. you do. I don't you think do. it's unreasonable to suggest to Kipper the day of the week every but day. Sammy, Ladies and gentlemen, the I give, weekend. I give Sammy full credit because uh, he made a slight adjustment to our program today because uh, on top of a regular appearance from Doug McLean, which mm. we thought for a second we lost him to nine holes on the golf course. <laughs> But That's then, how much he cares about our, our show. But then I, you know, when he tells me he's golfing on a Friday and he might miss our show, the first thing I do is I look at the weather. Yeah. And it's pissing in Florida right now. <laughs> in no Del chance Ray. he's playing golf. So, so he ain't stopped. playing. It got canceled, which means he's coming on the show. Good. So he'll be, in a great. he'll be in a great move. I mean, I would kill for some warm rain right mm. now compared to the weather in Toronto. If you're listening in yeah. Toronto today. We're sorry. You know. So we got Doug McLean on the top of the hour in our national edition of our show. We're also going to try to track down Zach Hyman. You remember him? He used to play for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Zach Hyman. Yeah, does it ring a bell at uh, all? Nothing yet? The, the four-checking forward, the grinder? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Could dumped it in a lot, didn't do much otherwise. He, he's been dumping it over the line a lot this year. <laughs> 48 <laughs> times. He sure has. We're going to try to track him down. He's coming in off a flight, uh, but uh, there's also some... Thought that he's going to meet up with Elliot Friedman and, and Jeff Merrick for 32 Thoughts. But if you are looking for something deeper, then... <laughs> hey, Zach, what's your favorite color? <laughs> oh, my God. Just, rude. just, just wait, no for, comment. Wait, wait for Zach on our show. We'll, yeah. we'll, 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 we'll hunt him down. We're going to ask him deep, hard-headed questions? Hard. Oh, wow. Hard. Cool. Like, we'll leave the rest of them to 32 Thoughts. All right. Can't wait to find out how this goes. Scored his 48th last night. Forty uh, seventh and forty eighth. Yeah, sorry. Well, I mean, he did score his forty eighth. Yes, he did. Um, You're not wrong. Yeah, has a chance to score fifty goals in Toronto. And more in Toronto. It's gonna happen. He also has had like six disallowed goals this year. So he got off to a slow start last night, and then yeah. they just kicked it right up. Yeah, ended and up being with eight three. Yeah, Buffalo. Connor Brown with a goal and an assist in the final two minutes of a. Five goal lead or something there. I know that Kipper hates this, and it's even worse because it's not even a leaf related thing in the leaf hour. But the Oilers jerseys, stop wearing those. Oh, I know. The navy they are and neon awful. orange. They're, your vile. home blue and orange jerseys are some of the nicest in the league. And you wear those Chicago Bear looking jer They're awful. Not stop okay. wearing them. Yeah. You want to tell Zach that? Sure. Okay. If you give me the opportunity, and he'll be like, well, obviously I love playing and wearing those colors. But he'll say he's a good guy. He's he's, he's not he, Tavares. No, he's got a bit more than Tavares. Yeah. He's, he's a getting a practice in today to face those Oilers tomorrow night. And give me the no, updates. What no, are the no, no Mitch Marner, and I I kind of had the thought that they were saving him this week for this big game, but they want to they want to be careful. Yeah, I appreciate that. You know, like as a Listen, I'm not even making any bones about it. I want the Leafs to win. I want the Leafs to do well. It's, you know, I we follow this team closely. It's a lot more fun when they succeed. I don't need Mitch Marner this weekend as much as I Listen, need Mitch just, Marner to play well just, in three weeks. Just cut the crap. Our show needs this. Yes. We don't care I about anything else. We're being this. selfish here. Fine. Whatever the reasons are, I want them <laughs> to win. A, and so I don't want them to play this it's weekend. It's an easier show when they win. Yes. Considerably. I, come on. That is not true. It is 100% oh, true. It me to come it's in here and argue and be mean to people yeah, and whatever. They, right? I mean, it's okay. It's good when they win a lot because we don't want to just be doing a show about the 2015 Leafs. But. Few losses doesn't hurt the I show. Mean, along the eighty-two yeah, game, you need a couple. You need a couple. Yeah, need a, couple. This is is a very simple question. <laughs> okay, when is our show better? When they win or when they lose? Who? Go ahead. Where, where, where is, is the five ninety-five? Where is the audience attention? Yeah. Or their 
The reasoning to tune into our show is yeah. that when they win or when they lose. At least this year, if they lose, they can't go watch the Raptors because they <laughs> stink. Oh, my God. Well, hey, Jays. <laughs> yeah, Jays. It's Jays time. Hey, are the Jays going to be much better? No. no, no. Um, but, yeah, I, I think I do. Okay, just to go inside baseball here and talk about the, 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 the mechanics sports. of how Sports Talk Radio Off works. The rails. Okay, tell but, us there. But I do think that the Toronto Maple Leafs, as presently constituted, are the absolutely perfect Sports Talk Radio team. A team that has a ton of stars yeah. that sometimes underachieve and have underachieved in the past and nobody really has any real expectations of. So I, I think there's a, it's a fun team to talk about. As long as they start winning now <laughs> in the playoffs. I agree. Over the season has been great, but we need rounds, brother. We need playoff rounds. We do. I, we talked about a, a round one win on Leafs Talk last year. Like 60,000 people were listening. When it was like, I, okay. I don't think. Okay. All right. Okay, let's get to uh, our first <laughs> Kippers Clipper. Is it off the rails already? And yeah. Doug's like we're way still off the rails. 45 minutes away Good. still. Uh, let's go to Sheldon Keefe on his thoughts of uh, having no Mitch Marner. Uh, he is progressing. He's skated the last few days. Uh, so... So that's progress for sure. I think the plan is for him to, uh, to to take tomorrow off again and then and then get back to it. But uh, yeah, he's he's uh, he's skating and he was out there for a good bit today before practice. So he's making progress, but not available this weekend. The bottom line is, have him ready a month from now. I think it's one of those things that like tell me when he's ready, and then we're gonna give him an extra week. You know, like one of those, let's just I, really be sure. I think there's th three to four to five sports science guys that are really, really earning their paycheck right well, now. let me say this, and I think I've said it before, but if your job <laughs> is sports science, medical, whatever, and a guy comes back too late, so he's extra yep. healthy, nothing yep. happens. Yep. If it's a day early and he gets hurt, you're fired. Oh, yeah, you're done. They are not incentivized. The cooks are in the kitchen right now being like... Let's sit a little longer. Yes. Let's I would sit be, a little longer. I would be scared, too, for my, oh. my job security. Mitch if, Marner? If he comes back and re-aggravates it or re-injures it, now you're Sheldon's completely, completely flirting with losing him in the playoffs. Yes. I mean, you're very likely to. Right now, it's a month. So uh, my best guess is we are under a month till playoffs. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it starts... Eh, four weeks from now, something like that. Maybe four weeks in a day. Now, if they're going to go to the length that they're go, going now where they, they miss, mm -hmm. he misses tomorrow night versus one of the hottest teams in hockey in the Edmonton Oilers, I, I'd i be hard-pressed to play him 24 hours later. No, no he's got, what's he's the in point? In Carolina. He just said, he said in that clip, he's not oh, playing he's this not, weekend. Oh, he's, he's not in no. that game. Okay. No, gone All the whole right. weekend. So the focus is Tuesday then. Okay, I thought maybe yeah. no, there was a chance. Yeah. Okay. All right. Devils uh, Tuesday. Well, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so Tuesday, Tuesday, Thursday. Yeah, New Jersey Devils, Washington Capitals in Toronto this upcoming week. So Yeah, that makes sense. I'm just looking you at You got to watch the Capitals again. I'm looking at text line here. A lot of people say the show is better when they lose. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's more fire. There's definitely more fire. Yeah, like, yeah. I would say 85% of the texts are saying it's better when they lose. But they'd still rather them win, so. Yeah, it's a funny thing. Because they it? know how they're going to act when they lose. To remember a quote from my good friend Brian Leach, seconds after we won the cup on the ice, it was like, Okay, what do we do now? Mm -hmm. And Brian Lee says, "I don't know. Let's go ask Mess, because you just you just don't know how to go, react. You just don't what know." What do I do with my hands? So it's like Lee fans now. If yeah. they win in the playoffs, it's like, okay, what what do we do now? One of the great jokes in the station from longtime host Roger Lejoie was that. The Leafs win the cup, and he'd be doing a call-in show the next day, and they'd be like, well, what are we going to do about the fourth line next year? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, Just it's, have it. It's so yeah. true. It's like, That's what do you do? Newspaper that yeah. You can write a Pulitzer-winning article. What are you writing tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> you know? It's... Mitch Marner isn't the only one out. TJ Brody will miss a second consecutive start from a coach's decision. Let's go to Sheldon Keefe on clip number two on TJ. 
Rhodes is a better player than he's played, um, and he's also played better hockey than it perceives or than the perception might be. Um, you know, it's a guy that's taken on the hardest minutes and hardest matchups of anybody on our team, and uh, he's got you know plus minus is what it is, but. It's when you've got the hardest matchups and you're still finding ways to be on the positive side, you're doing lots of good things there. But I think uh, we and he acknowledge that he could be better and we need him at his best. So, you know, if we have to take a step back for in order for that to, to, to be the case, then that's what we'll do and, and that's where we're at right now. What would you like to say? That was good. You know, like a lot of, you know, it, a lot of truth in that, but also yeah. a lot of like, hey, this is a guy we need. You know, he's been put in tough positions. We know we can be better, and we need him. We need him. So what you're saying is, un Tortorella. Oh yeah, very yeah. un Tortorella. Did not get that support. So, That's true. Wouldn't it have been hilarious if he just said, "I'm not talking about T.J. Brody." Yeah, <laughs> not talking about T.J. It's between me and T.J. Um, and say no, Guy Boucher. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot he's existing. We haven't heard from him all year. Uh, play the second clip too. There, the the. Keith Quip 3, and he goes even further detail on what... Because he got asked what do you want to see from him. Yes. And that's what... Didn't they ask that exact question to Torts? Mm -hmm. And he said, basically, it's like, it's between me and Sean or whatever. But so listen to what he said here. Yeah, that's a big part of it. That's the mental part of it. He said a tough go here right from the beginning of training camp all the way through. Uh, and because of the demands that we put on him, he hasn't really had time to breathe and regroup and find himself. And, and uh, I think that's... That's kind of where we're at. We've added some defensive depth here, obviously, at the trade deadline, and we're in a different position as a team uh, than we were. Uh, so we get a chance, as I said, to to really help uh, Rhodes and, and uh, the mental part of it. I think we're hoping re-energizes him, and uh, with that comes an extra step. And, and you know, when you have an extra step, all of a sudden the puck moves quicker, all of a sudden you're defending less, all these sorts of things start to fall into place. But the uh, you know, most important thing right now for us is just to you know, give him the time that he needs to get back to being himself because it's like as I say, he's he's a very very important piece of our team. Uh, when he's at his best, he's a, as good a defender as we have, and reliable and consistent in guys we have. So, we gotta get him to that. Wow, I get it. It's kind of daunting when you look at past Riley and McCabe that your next two pairs are Benoit and Timmins and Edmondson and Lilligren and. Labushkin's on the outside looking in right now, but yeah, he's coming back from being sick, so I think he's probably going to take tomorrow night off as well, and then is maybe he still. Yeah, they, they, it was his first time back in the ice since yeah. the Carolina game, so yeah, he's been fighting it, so mm -hmm. he, he's going to miss tomorrow too. Brody's supposed to be a little bit of a buffer between Riley and McCabe and your your next pair. Yeah, for sure. Mm. It's just you know. It, I don't think a lot of the off ice stuff too. Like Brody lost a family member this year, if I'm not mistaken. Like he's, it's yeah, you know, and it's been a challenge in a, a number of ways. I think for him this season. So yeah, that's the human side of it for sure. You know, yeah, that's relevant. So get him back in a spot where he's feeling better about things. I like the idea of like him and Edmondson or someone, someone else that can kind of help him out a little bit because he has eaten the brunt of it. And I, Keith points out yeah. his plus minus. Well, that was interesting. He wants us to go look that up. It is the best among Leafs D. Yeah, this year, I was despite surprised by that. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think we've been, you know, appropriately hard on Keith over the the season for sure. And you know, it's it's the the I guess the being a radio show that talks about the least every day. You're going to talk about the coach. We'd listen to his clips, but I will give him credit for how he's handling this. Yeah. You know, he, this is a guy that's one of the you know he's been with this team. Was this his fourth year? Right, he signed a four year yeah. contract. It's the final year. He's been with this team of four yeah. years. He's been one of your best guys. And he's clearly fighting it. He takes him out of the lineup. He gives detailed answers on why. Talks about how he still thinks he, you know, he's a great player for the team. Like, to me, if you're going to scratch a core member of a team, this is kind of how you handle it. Mm -hmm. And I think he's doing a good job of it. I have to give him credit. Yeah. So but you got to remember too I'm that not uh, with you. I'm not conversing with he's. He, <laughs> yeah. what he's what I'm not debating with you. I'm not conversing yeah. with you. He also has developed his his coaching through Kyle Dubis, who's been that guy mm -hmm. that it's kinder it's gentler it's not it's like i said it's unlike tortorella yes right that is the way they go about things is different than torts much different yeah. and we can also sit here and debate sometimes where that line is and how 
Is it too soft? Is it too coddling? Is it too warm mm -hmm. blanket around you? Or sometimes uh, tougher love is in order sometimes. You know what I think the most important thing is, and you know we can disagree on whether you should be harder or kinder or whatever the heck it is. It's just authenticity. You know, you just can't pretend to be a hard guy when you're not. You can't pretend to be, you know, the opposite either. So you, if all of a sudden Torts was, you know, telling us that he just wants everyone to do their best, we'd be like, I'm sorry? Like, that's not who you are. Uh, yeah, it is a good point where he's just like, maybe you don't expect him to explain it about why. Yeah. So maybe it's stupid to get bent out of shape about it. But just when you hear, I just think it's very fascinating that literally like a day later, we get the coach of the Leafs taking the exact opposite sort of tact compared to what Torts did with Couturier. Someone Couturier's. who's arguably less important. Yeah. Not to say he's not important. Yeah. But, Anyways. Um, and that's the that's the that's like the beauty of coaching is that... You can do it a bunch of different ways. You can do it a bunch of different ways. You find out that, that break point and you, 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 you're judged by the results at yeah. the end of the day. So for sure, we'll, we'll see how this thing plays out uh, in the in the coming days or weeks for TJ Brody. Two things I want to talk about. Um, one of them is like the third line is presently constructed. They put Robertson down on the fourth line. Robertson stunk the other night. I thought, yeah, oh yeah, and so he's on a fourth line with Holmberg and Reeves right now. <laughs> Dewar, I know. Well, what is that? what is that? I don't know. It's a Franken line, and then Dewar is with Camp and Gregor as a third line, which is also really. What are your thoughts on Connor Dewar in his, what's it been, five games or something since the deadline? I don't mind him at all. He works. Right? I, I see a guy that's feisty. I see, I hear his name. Mm -hmm. He's in plays. He, he's along the walls. Yeah. Penley kill. He seems to have a I'm specific fine. role he, and be content with it. He's, he's right where we thought he'd be. Yeah. In the bottom six, fourth line type of guy that you hope is feeling very comfortable by the first round and providing some energy. Um, and just those lines, just to note that Bertuzzi was not at practice because of illness again right. today. So I would imagine if you were looking at the lines that I put in there, you could picture... Um, Bert's probably there. Bert's, Robertson's but, yeah. probably out. McMahon moves down. Bert yes. goes up on the top line or whatever. Yeah. But I, I, don't, I think Robertson will probably be out when it's all said and done. It was interesting. He scored 40 goals, well, 38 and 36 goals a couple of years in, in the dub. Yeah. Like, you know, I haven't seen any offensive ability out of him at the NHL level, but he does everything else well. Yeah, to me, he's a guy that you can picture playing in, you know, responsible minutes for you in a playoff. Like, you're going to put him out there and he'll give you nine, ten solid minutes in a yeah, playoff series. That's not going to kill you. Protect a lead. You're okay with him going over the board. Skates hard. He's young. Seems feisty. Yeah. Young. Also on the ice just prior to practice. Matt Murray taking shots. Oh yeah, oh yeah. What, what's what, what do you? He's ready think? to go. Well, so what does that mean? It means that uh, he'll he'll get assessed early April. He'll hopefully get medical clearance, and he's right in the mix. Like he could be an option for the Leafs in playoffs. He could be an option for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yes, you heard he, it here first. He Matt said, Murray. He said moving well, a long way away. According to Keith, how oh, long can you see this like Air Bud style Listen, script? What do you want to say? He's really close Stanley here, and now we got in. now we got uh, four guys that we can pick from. You've been on the Murray beat early, like you definitely know something. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I know he's itching. There's something that like there's certain things that you I, bring up that I, I'm just like. Could they just, get him AHL no, games so you could have? A, yes, they can. I would love to see if you know. Let's say he gets five American League. I games think it's an automatic. Play. Yeah. That he's going to go play some games for the Toronto Marlies. I wonder if he could play for them in playoffs. What's their schedule? Like, do they they line up the same as like a no, but close? Okay, yeah. so if he needed to go down there for a conditioning stint in the last first two weeks of April, mm -hmm. would they be playing then? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah they yeah. are. Okay, yeah, okay. And it's not an option that the Leafs could re-sign him for next year. Not an option. I, it, it, there's, it's not not an option. Like, gotcha. Mean, it's not, 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 not an option. <laughs> so what you're saying is, what it's I'm an saying option. is, it's an option. <laughs> like he could find himself this on a on a low contract to get himself back in the mix. I have a contract. And, and, uh, listen, like seven fifty. Well, I, I don't know what that number would be. I don't PTO? know. I bet you though, if he's no healthy, giving him a one way. Nobody. Oh yeah. 
No one in the league's <laughs> giving him a one-way contract. Next. I'm not Summer. doing this again. Oh There's yeah. No way. Oh yeah. What are you you're not doing it? He's We're getting a one-way. Right he's getting a one-way contract next year. With whom? I don't know who. But I'm, I'm, is signing I'm telling you there would be enough interest with what is perceived as a healthy Matt Murray. Six foot four, 30 year old, two time Stanley 30. Cup champion. Is he 30 yet? Uh, not yet, but he will be. That's a young goalie. Yeah. With a ton of experience. To uh, so Anyways, we'll keep an eye on that storyline as well. We have one more clip on Matthews and Domi. Uh, who are playing together together again tomorrow night? So if, before before yeah. we play that, can I ask something? Yes, we we're doing the contract thing with Matt Morgan. So on the contract thing, because you know we do, we love to do this. <laughs> what's what's it like you usually? Morgan Riley is playing with Jake McCabe uh, tonight or tomorrow night. Yes, and McCabe's been really good. He's become like one of their shutdown sure. guys. He's uh, also scored seven even strength goals, which you know for D man pretty good. He's definitely changed the way the perception of himself he's coming off he, he, a four million dollar contract he has next year yeah and then he's eligible to re-sign a deal what kind of money would jake mccabe be looking at as a ufa as a potential oh gosh you're a long ways away here i don't know you can sign him next year you yeah can you, sign, can. Sign you can sign him this summer couldn't you july you can re-sign him but yeah. like if jake mccabe is averaging 18 20 minutes from here on in, mm -hmm. and they win a couple of rounds, they get themselves in the conference final, then you're talking about yeah, a healthy raise. Yeah, you know, like, you only need a team to believe in you, and I would be that general manager with Jake McCabe. Yesterday's price is not today's price. <laughs> he, uh, he's playing 2035 for the Leafs right now. Uh, on the now, back end. if if I asked you the, uh, a question here, and w and we know where he is on the pecking order for the Toronto Maple Leafs, but if you were talking about a, a defensive core mm -hmm. that you thought was a legitimate Stanley Cup contender, yep. is he in your top four? Can he yeah, play I could, that I could role? I have him in my sec second pair. You can have sure. him in your second pair. Yeah, I agree with you that he's not a first pair yeah. Stanley Cup winning. Preferably playing with a really good right yeah. hand shot on I mean, the other side. Sure. Which the Leafs have clearly. I think lacked. if he can clean up some hiccups, yeah. Sometimes I, you do see the the. He's asked poor to do a decision. lot on this team. Oh no! Number one is, uh, set a physical presence. Yeah, you know, and, and he has. Yeah. I, I I don't mind him at all. I think he's he's got some edge, some attitude. Uh, go back to Boston and a couple little cross checks into Marchand, which yeah, oh I, God, I loved love. yeah. and we all loved. Did like, you? Hold on. Did you see that video? I did. The mic up with Marchand. Yeah. Did yes. you see that? I couldn't believe the Bruins willingly tweeted that out. Marchand it was such a saying bad you're going to get look. it. And Just like, I didn't know yeah. where it came from. It was the Bruins official account tweeted it out. And he was like screaming in the ref's face I and crying. I also tweeted him lining up against Marner saying, you cross-checked me in the face, you're going to get it, you're going to get it to Marner. And then turtle twice in that game. Is this bad of me now because... Anything I see on the internet, I tend to not think it's fake. I think it's all fake. No, that's all of that's, it. That's that's the proper yeah, reaction. You should start from there. And I, I, I watch that, and I the first thing is, is that really true? Does does it match up? Did they the put his voice in? <laughs> like, no, this is healthy. This is great. Everyone should start from the. This probably isn't real and <laughs> like, needs to be proven to me that it is. Standpoint on the you internet. Know, you know, not to that not is. to age shame anybody here. But, like, the actual reaction for most people, you know, getting close to your age would be like, wow, this is crazy. 100% real. But the yeah. fact that you have that cynicism is very good. Yeah. Very good, Kipper. Oh, yeah. I'm not calling you old, by the way, buddy. No, no. You're spry. But uh, we've all received hey, a thing or two from I'm, I'm the guy that walks into a restaurant bar and, and, and puts myself up against the wall. I have nothing behind I'm me. I'm the dinosaur. <laughs> nothing behind me. No trust anything. Anything coming at me, I'm, I am I can see. This guy's He's going to the wall. Duke's up like a, the yeah. fighting Irish logo He's going to the washroom and checking behind the toilet for the gun. <laughs> Godfather. Never be too sure. Oh, man. So, do you want to play the last beating. clip we have yes, about yes. Matthews and uh, Domi playing together again? Absolutely. All right, let's do it. You know, there's parts of their game, not unlike Mitch and Austin, that, that fit really well. Um, Max looks to make plays and has the ability to make plays. I think anytime something fresh and new, then, you know, it... it uh, uh, it works well and feels good early, and you kind of ride that a little bit. So that's where those guys are at right now. 
so there's some of that I think and then some of it as I say is just a, it's a fit with the chemistry of the group and you know with Mitch and, and Yarncroft being out we've we felt like we needed more depth and more skill in particular on the wings so that's that's uh, changed how we've approached things with Max and you know this this uh, uh, connection that those guys have made uh, you know we're, we've benefited from and look to ride that yeah I, I, I think tomorrow night's one of those where's this going and just hearing Sheldon seconds ago say you know we're gonna try to ride that or like let's see it, what kind of momentum it can it can keep going yeah. here Saturday nights tomorrow nights a, I can't a big night for for many ways but I do hear a hesitant coach that doesn't want to go ahead and blow that line up I hear him say yeah there's parts of their game that fit really well <laughs> Like, which is saying, I'm not talking about the parts that I think don't fit really well. And he says, it, yeah, but sometimes when things are new, they, you know, they, they seem new and exciting and connect. Like, he seems like, I'm not sure if we did this for a long period of time, it would work for us. Mm -hmm. It seems to me the, the implication there, but that's me with my Coach Dakota ring on, my Sheldon Keefe Dakota ring. You don't. Yeah. Uh, can I ask you guys a quick question about Nyes, who I see in the top line here? Absolutely. And I'm sure if Bertuzzi's feeling well enough, he'll slide into that spot and Nyes will move down or whatever. But in that, doing that, Robertson moves to the lineup. You know. Give him a night. Why does Nyes, like Nyes seems to be Teflon as opposed to Robertson who really comes out of the lineup pretty much at every turn. And I'm not saying that I'm a big fan of Robertson at all. I, I would say I'm the, the opposite, in fact. But Nyes for long stretches of this season has not been great, and it feels like one guy gets way more yeah. rope than the other. There's a it's very easy three. answer. He's there's, six three. There's a very, yeah. Well, that's part of it. But part of it is when he's not scoring, he doesn't hurt you. But, he, you know, he's in the okay. right spots. He checks. He, yeah, you know. I'm not as high on that part. No? In his game. No, there's some times when I think uh, things blow up on him. His head's down. Mm -hmm. A couple times I think he can get rocked, mm -hmm. which... We saw earlier, so I, I think it's just a, a learning experience. I'm, I'm leaning towards our, our boy here, Sammy, on like maybe too much sometimes. I'd back be fine off with a it, little with bit a scratch more. Or two. I would, I yes. would absolutely be yeah. fine with that. But I think that the, in the absence of either guy producing offense, yeah. I'll tell you which guy I'd rather have on the ice. Yeah, and it's nice. You That's know, fair. so but but I, but I would. I think I he has no opposition. To I'm sure. Crash. I'm sure Robertson's sitting there being like, "Yeah, really? hey, this guy too. Yeah, he's got he, eight goals all year. I got ten yeah. half the games or something." He has all the makings to be a front line forward, mm -hmm. right, left mm -hmm. winger. Yeah, but I, th I see a lot of college stuff that he got away with that this he can't get away him. with here. Absolutely, a lot of hockey. Well, listen, a lot of minutes. You're 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 you were asked predominantly to play with one of the best goal scorers in the game right now and playmakers in in marner and look at max max is a veteran he's he makes better plays than nyes yep and he has a night where he can get four assists mm -hmm. playing with a guy like matthews whereas nice can't do that Definitely he's had not. great he's had matthews has had great nights and he has not been able to ride the coattails or, or ride with them Definitely. Nyes is another guy, and the Leafs have so many of these, is I can see him in his best career season having 30 and 20 for 50 points type of thing. I can see him scoring, but I can't. I would think that's a disappointment on the buildup of Matthew Nyes. Uh, if he turns into a 50-point guy and, and he doesn't end up like a 70. It doesn't. It depends to me on how he gets there. Yeah. If he starts to figure out that he's a huge guy and starts running guys over and mm -hmm. starts being in people's faces like he was when he fought against Pittsburgh right. and they're all fired up. Tom Wilson's 50 points. Has he so even come he? close no. to that? No. So what makes you think that he will be that guy if, if he... If that he has young? a night like that where he fights and everybody gives him all these accolades and says, whoa, that's great, that's exactly what the team needs, and then you spend the next 30 ga games not looking like that, do you like his chances of having that type of career now? No, no, and I don't think it's right to ask him to be that. If he's not, you know, he's not a fighter. He didn't come here There's to no be There's no ask. That. When you're that young and you're just breaking in the league mm -hmm. and the canvas is completely clean, there's no real ask other than, Go contribute. Go be discover yes. yourself. Yes. Are you a goal scorer? Are you a checker? Are you a yeah. tough guy? What are you? Go let it 
let us know by your play. Yeah. Like, I think he missed a, a, a bit of a window here to turn himself into something. But to your point, if it was never in him to begin with, well, I don't know. I don't yeah. know if we were going to still see that power type of guy. No, and I, you know, it, it totally, I don't necessarily agree that he missed any kind of window he's played 60 nhl games now or whatever it is you know where he's no he to your point go and figuring he, it out he could have picked a few more spots to drop his gloves and turn himself into a if he wants huge to do hero that, but he may not want to be that player no you know? question he doesn't right. after witnessing probably the last 30 or 40 games since right. that moment but listen he's gonna score himself 15 goals on the season or something like that and i can see him i like the way he is with the puck in terms of puck possession and in kind of using his body to hold guys off. I see a 30-goal scorer in this player. Yeah. And so if he's that, to Sam's point, who's also net front and physical on the puck and Zach Hyman on the forecheck, yeah. you love it. But to your point, if he's just skating around and not involved until he gets his goals like Nick Robertson, it's different. So Chris Kreider? Can oh he turn God. himself oh into Chris God. Kreider? Yeah, he's I Chris mean, Kreider. Chris Kreider's so fast. It's I don't know that nice Chris, that. Chris Kreider is it. He scored 50. Yeah, he's a huge guy. Yeah. Physical presence. I, I, I To me... I don't know. No, he's had, he's had, he's had, Kreider's Kri Kri had challenges over his career yeah. of, of looking like a, a world-class star. And then some nights it's just he not there. He doesn't have any edge either, right? He's just a big guy who can tip the puck and be in those spots. And so maybe that's nice. You hope he's more physical than that. And hopefully with some confidence, he finds some of what you're talking about, but yeah. I don't I, think he's ever going to drop the gloves a lot. My expectations for nice have definitely shifted. Yeah. After seeing like, from what I was told he is to what I've seen so far, I would say it's a different player Listen, than I thought, year, which is fine. A year and yeah, a half ago, to your words too a year and a half ago, he was cowing. Don't, he's untouchable. He's going to be a star. He's mm -hmm. going to be this. He's mm -hmm. going to be that. Mm -hmm. Is that fair to say? Absolutely, bud. People, I mean, I mean, I, I had him in a trade. Right? Is he a star? No one said he'd be a star. Oh, yeah. You yourself had him as a third oh. liner. You on the show said, I, I see him as a guy who's going to come in and play third liner. No, but, but I'm was, talking about the perception. He was built up. For sure. As a can't miss, don't even think about trading Definitely. him. Definitely. That was, a, we did trade him on the show a couple times. Yeah, I traded him for Timo Meyer. <laughs> Let's That's go good. to break. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going to go to break. We'll welcome in Luke Fox, NHL writer for Sportsnet.ca. Always a fun guest to have on our show. We're back after these words on Off the Rails Friday. Real Kipper and Born. All right, let's get right to it. Luke Fox, NHL writer for Sportsnet.ca. Let's welcome him in. Uh, Luke there's, what, 14 games left in the Toronto Maple Leaf season and no Mitch Marner, no TJ Brody, yet there is a there's a vibe led by our boy Sammy here on tomorrow night. He's giddy about this game. But are we going to look back at this game after it's done and reassess the Toronto Maple Leafs to, to measure up against the Oilers to say whether or not this team has a legit chance of going anywhere in the playoffs or they stink. Yeah, it's a good point, Nick. Um, I think there is something to it. You're right. It is kind of hard to judge them entirely with no Marner, no yarn croc, uh, no Brody who, you know, is going through a couple healthy scratches right now, but we firmly expect to be that back in game one, but you look at the schedule and there's so few games that have a chance to mean something in terms of a measuring stick, in terms of how do they look against a true contender? And this is one of them. You know, they got the Carolina Hurricanes Sunday, but they're going to be tired off a of back-to-back. Uh, you know, they finished the season in Tampa and Florida, which on paper could be good games. But by that point, we might be into total load management for all the teams involved because we fully expect the playoff positioning to be locked in by then. So we might see, you know, a lot of superstars sit. This might be one of the last great chances to see how they look against a legit team. The Oilers are coming off a win. They're going to get a night's rest. Uh, so, you know, Saturday night, spotlight's on. I, I expect a good one. And, you know, you think back to to some of the the big nights Connor has had in Toronto, um, you know, with fans, it's only once a year. You, people still talk about the night Caudry shut him down. They still talk about how McDavid put Morgan Riley on a poster coming over the blue line that one game in Toronto. So, oh, what a you know, you know Edmonton's going to bring it, so <laughs> Toronto better too. Yeah. 
Um, the Edmonton Oilers are coming in with the second best power play in the league this year, which is a step down from where they're usually at. The Leafs' power, uh, penalty kill stinks. Uh, how concerned are you? Like going into playoffs, I looked at the best penalty kills, and it's like the other five top division or top teams in the East, and the Leafs are twenty fourth or something. How worried should fans be and the Leafs be about the quality of their kill? Yeah, they should be worried. Yeah, I, I think because we've seen it in the past, right? We've seen them get undone by not having as strong special teams as the team they're facing over a seven game series. It's done them in the past, so that's probably in the back of fans mind for sure uh the coaches mind for sure and it might be back in the of, the of the players mind so of all the the teams headed to the playoffs if if we were to cut it off and, and start the postseason tomorrow the Leafs would have the worst pk of the bunch um and you know management's paying attention because all three guys depth guys but all three guys they went out and added at the trade deadline Dewar, labushkin edmondson they all kill penalties. So uh, they know, they're aware that this is a, a yeah. an area that needs improvement. And we haven't quite seen it yet. And, you know, again, it's like, okay, no Marner, no Yarn Croc, but are they, get, are, is it going to instantly snap into place when they're at full health? And, you know, the, the hope is a deep run and you're not going to have all your penalty killers for four rounds. So it is a, a point of weakness. Um, and I think it puts even more stress on the power play. That needs to be sharp. It, it got a goal last game. It's coming around a little bit, but it sagged at the beginning of March too. So, uh, you know, hopefully the, the penalty kill can be sharper, but the power play needs to pick them up as well. We're talking about Luke Fox, NHL writer for Sportsnet.ca. So if we set aside the Leafs versus the Oilers, can we kind of bring in uh, Austin Matthews versus McDavid and, They've had some good showings in the past, but right now it's a three-horse race for an MVP with Kucherov, McKinnon, McDavid, despite Matthews leading the league in goals. So how much is there to gain for Austin Matthews tomorrow night? Well, I, I, I believe the, you know, the guys that are at the top of the top, the super elite, like to compare themselves to each other. Um, you know, you can't tell me, that McDavid didn't want to see if he could go out and get 60 goals after watching, you know, someone like Austin do it last year, uh, just to see if he could. And now he's, you know, toned it down a little bit, uh, mixed in a few more passes. But I, I do think the best of the best in all team sports, you know, li like to measure themselves up against one another. Now, Austin today was asked about that. And he said, oh, that's more of a fan thing, more of a media thing. You guys blow it up. We see them only twice a year, but I've been in the building for a lot of these games, whether it's out in Edmonton or in Toronto, and there's extra juice in the building. And Noah Gregor was saying today that, you know, we're fans of the game too. We like to see the best of the best go head to head. So uh, there, there, there'll be a little something there, but the stars like to downplay it. One thing I don't think we heard from Sheldon Keefe on this weekend is what's up with the goaltending situation. Is there any sort of indication about who may play which game? Yeah, he wasn't asked about that, so we don't have an answer. And, and I think it's pretty fascinating because I do think it's telling. It's telling that Joseph Wall got both the Boston Bruins games. Uh, now, he lost them both, gave up four in both, uh, so that put him behind the eight ball a little bit. But I think, you know, they tried to couch it around, hey, we're just playing the schedule, just we're just playing the calendar, both guys are going to get work. But the same guy got the team that they're probably going to face in the playoffs, and I think that was a test. A challenge and it was also maybe tipping their hand of who they thought their number one was at that point now a few games have passed Samsonov has racked up some wins um so maybe the their view has changed a little bit so i'm very curious to see who gets the start tomorrow because i think even though carolina is a, a legit contender as well you know it's the, it's the second half of the back-to-back -back. it's on the road not at home um i i think we're gonna know what they're th who they're leaning towards a little bit by who gets the the tap on the shoulder tomorrow all right luke i'm, I'm not busting on you because i know you do a terrific job okay but why wasn't he asked about the goalies like is that just you guys around the coffee shop going oh geez we forgot to ask that one sometimes that happens sometimes that happens there's a few <laughs> other storylines going on but you're right it should have been asked uh me myself i wasn't there i'm i'm, oh. I'm having some load management there you I'm, go that's why some, it wasn't asked you, know, you what's weren't funny, there what's funny is that we were literally like that's not like luke would ask that 
<laughs> yes, <laughs> Luke would piss him off. <laughs> yes, I'm I, I'm TJ Brody right now. I'm, I need some mental clarity for the the stretch run. Well, that explains everything. You weren't there yeah. to ask the tough question. That's all we. Uh, that, that, that actually makes a lot of sense. Uh, any when when you are at the rink this week, any eyebrows raised on uh, Marner's timeline, and is it uh, is it more serious than they led on? Is this them just being overly cautious, con- cautious of a a guy that they need so badly in the first round? Yeah, overly cautious. I, I think that's it. Um, but it is kind of curious. Like, now we're talking, so he's he's not going to play Saturday or Sunday. So now this is seven games. And the way they were talking about the ankle injury at the beginning, they made it seem really minor. Mm-hmm. But seven games seems like a lot. Not even practicing with the team yet. Uh, you know, I, I, I want to give them the benefit of the doubt and take them for their words, saying they're just being extra cautious. And you look where they are in the standings. There is zero need to rush this guy back. You want him feeling great for game one. So I understand it, but it keeps dragging on. The whole day-to-day from being day-to-day thing uh, is is lingering here. Yeah, that's an absolutely insane comment. I, I, <laughs> it's like, that's not day-to-day at all. We've never heard that <laughs> no, before in our lives. That's not what that means. Yeah. Um, how about the viability of Domi with, uh, with Matthews? Do you think that's something we could see stick? In a playoff round, I think Marner goes back there. I, I do uh, once he's healthy, but I'm a, I'm a little bit confused why it took them so long I to know. at least try this. I mean, especially when you look at the first half of the year when Domi's fit was up in the air, Bertuzzi's fit was up in the air. Both those guys were slow to get going, and it's like outside of Marner, who's your best distributor? Who's your best passer? I think it's Max Domi. Uh, you know, and he, he, he was kind of lingering there on the third line, second line, finally gets his shot, and it's like, bang, it clicks. You know, they combined for nine points uh, last game, albeit I'm, I'm not, you know, I wasn't thrilled with Washington's defense or its goaltending right. or anything. Uh, it's going to be a different story in the playoffs. But, um, yeah, it, they, there's definitely chemistry there. Um, so, you know, I think when Marner's healthy, Marner gets that spot back. But if, you know the opposition is shutting them down in a playoff series. Keith now knows he has a great second option and he knows Matthew's Domi work. And, and part of it is because one wants to shoot first, one wants to pass first. Part of it also is I think those guys understand each other. They spend a lot of time off the ice together. They sit at the back of the plane together. They, they've known each other um, since Domi was a coyote because Matthews trains with a lot of coyotes in the summer. So there's a there's a relationship there. And I mean, that's a small piece. You still have to have the on-ice chemistry, but they get along. They they kind of read each other well. And, uh, you know, they're, they're big fans of one another. And, and if Matthews likes you, if he likes you on his line, there's a good chance you're going to stay on his line. Mm-hmm. Well, is there a good chance that he could also resign? Like, it didn't seem that long ago. We were, we were talking about Max Domi. Where's the fit to... Is is the narrative now for some we need to resign him? Well, he's been a great leaf, right? Like he's well liked amongst his teammates. He's been versatile. He's his attitude's been good, even when he's been slumping or when he's been stuffed down in the bottom six. Uh, you know, I was I was a little bit on the fence with the signing, to be honest. And he's exceeded my expectations in terms of his his versatility. We all know his warts in the defensive zone when he doesn't have the puck, but he's a heck of a playmaker. He's one of the fastest guys on the team, and he has one of the best attitudes. And he's definitely a team first guy. Like he, he want. I think the the run in Dallas gave him a taste, right, of going deep. Um, you know, he's been on a lot of bad teams over the years, and I think now that he's tasted coming close, he really wants a cup. So I, I think they should re- consider it. Um, you know, I I don't think there's going to be enough money to bring back Bertuzzi and Domi, but but of the two. Um, the fact that one can play center when you need him to, uh, I'd be leaning there. All right, Luke, we'll let you go. Hey, uh, p- appreciate your uh, your time, especially on your off day. Yeah, keep up okay. your keep up but your listen, good work when we, you get we, back. We cannot have the rest of the media asking all these soft questions. This <laughs> is your you in there. this is your last day off. Okay. <laughs> I'll take a run at him tomorrow morning. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Luke Fox from sportsnet.ca. So what is, what is Max Domi worth? Mm. Kipper's favorite. You lit I up like a, this. you literally lit up like I a Christmas tree. It.
Love it. <laughs> the yeah. twinkle in your eye is yeah. back. <laughs> money, 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 money. <laughs> I'd give him the same amount of money for three years. Yeah, that's not happening. Okay. I, well, I'm a bad negotiator. <laughs> I and don't. A, and a bag of chips. I'm not sure it works. So you, he's going to get more than three years for a long time? Because then you got to be careful for me. What's he going to finish with? I think it's been really, he have, really 40 points? hard. Yeah. He's, 40 points. Uh, 39. Uh, sorry. Is he going to finish with 50? Uh, I'm sorry. How I, many points does he have? He has 40 points. 40 points. Yeah. 39, yeah. To finish with He's at eight 50. Goals. Yeah, I know. I know. But there's others that. This is I'm, I'm can, harder can make, on him than, make... than you guys are. I have liked him a lot lately. Mm-hmm. I struggle yeah. to find a fit. When I build lines for this team, I find myself consistently going, it just, there's no, if he plays left wing but, with Matthews it, and Marner. But every once in a while, you need a bit of a, as to Luke's point, yeah. you need that utility, utility guy. For sure. That can, I think he's a good can player. play both sides. It's depth. It's competitive. He I can like score. His he can power play. He can. Can't score. But yes, he can create. Offense. Make plays. Yes. He can rip it. Make plays. Yeah, he can. He yeah. can. He can absolutely rip it. He, he needs he, but he 14 doesn't. seconds to get it off, but he can absolutely rip it. I, I I just think it's a big risk to do any sort of term. And here's what I think, Kip. I think he is good enough that someone should give him term and money. I just don't know if it's Toronto. Well, know- yeah, to your point, it's everybody's getting a raise around him. What about one year at $4 million? He's not going to want to sign sure. one year. No, nor should he. But didn't he come right? here and say that he was, because he's talking about, and the, I guess it's talk is cheap in the offseason after he signed a contract, but, you know. He's played on all these teams, and he wants he's, to find a home, and he's come here. 29 years old. Looking for his will last, be his last big contract if he can get one. And he mm. loves loves being a Leaf, right? and I think that's endearing too. And he's played for half a dozen teams. All one-year deals do is leave you exposed to go find another team. So he's going to be looking for three, four, five years next year at a bump up of $3 million. I don't think... There's a lot. There's a, there's a long way to go before yeah. that happens. Mm. And let's see how the rest of this season plays out. Let's see what kind of success he can have in the playoffs, which lately has shown that he can contribute in big games in the playoffs too. Yep. So there is value there, yep. and I think it's a value at a raise. How much of a raise is up to him, and how he <laughs> conducts himself from here on in. If you had mm. to pick between him and Bertuzzi to resign, who, which one would you go? It's not close for me. For Tuesday. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I, I like Max because I think Max is something that also, and Luke Chuck t- touched on this, the attitude. He gives them a little bit of a strut. Yep. You listen to his I like his, his social media presence. I like he, that he likes. It's inclusive. Yeah. He never, it's, it's we. He's a good guy. It's a we. It's yeah. not a me. It's not an I. For it's sure. we. And that's, that's obviously a hockey background. Nothing. And yeah. And as a, the fan is why I am on the show. Mm-hmm. He, my my passion detector is it goes, it's off the charts with him. Yeah, oh he guy loves cares it. and loves, loves being a leaf, and you Absolutely. can tell. And by the guys he went after this year, including uh, Gudis, yeah. Bennett, Marchand. and Marchand, yeah, he gets it. He does. He gets it. Some attitude, baby. Yeah. But right. I'm not giving him any more than three million dollars for one. <laughs> three by three. Let's three, go. Three by three would be ideal, but he's not doing that, right, Kippy? Let's see how it finishes. Maybe, okay. Maybe it's more. If you're his agent, what are you asking for? If they're at, if they went to him right now and they're like, "We want to do a contract." You're his agent, which I know you—that's yeah. what you wanted. Yeah. Would love to do. What yeah, would you ask for? I'd, I'd be up around four. For how long? A minimum three years. I think he'd look at uh, eleven to twelve million dollars for three years. Okay. Right, fifty point guy. Elevated we'll table salary it. Cap? We'll, t- we'll table it and talk about at least talk on Monday, or at least uh, our money. I think I do. Okay. Really? Our thanks to Luke Fox. And when we return the top of the hour, we lead it off with Doug McClain. Didn't get his golf in. He's going to be crusty. It's raining down there. We'll get his thoughts on Tortorella. And also Zach Hyman. We're going to try to track down the soon-to-be 50-goal scorer for the Edmonton Oilers. Plenty more. Real Kipper and Bourne. So do not go away. All right, here it is. Off the Rails Friday, the National Hour. 
Live on Sportsnet, Sportsnet 650 in Vancouver, Sportsnet 960 in Calgary. This hour, Real Kipper and Bourne, brought to you by Bet365. Breaking news. Doug McLean's book is going paperback. Is that right? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best I got right now. As we welcome it's a quick in turnaround to paperback. A very, very wet Doug McLean who bailed on us yesterday for nine holes only to be rained out. So listen, uh, there's only one change. I need it I need the cover changed on the book. Oh. To what? I need it changed because uh, the paperback edition is gonna be the identical cover. But in bold letters across the top in red, it's going to say national bestseller. Ooh. So I think you, I need the change. If you're going to promote it, I need the change, Don. I want you to be accurate. Wow. Life is really good, isn't it? And it got a lot better now? since I made you a regular on Fridays. Yeah, it's really helped my career. <laughs> it really has helped. So I got a golf story for you Uh-oh. first to start off. I play, I play the other day, I play at, I get invited to play at Boca Rio, which is a real exclusive club in Boca Raton, hundred or so members. So I go out and play and the caddy comes up and he said, I I understand you're a hockey guy. And I said, yeah, you know, I coach the Panther. Oh, and he gets all excited. So on about the sixth hole, he started to call me David. Hey, David, uh, you know, one cup, you know, just move it one cup. You know, these caddies, all they do caddies now is tell you how to putt. They don't carry your clubs. <laughs> they help you look for the oddball, but they just tell you how to putt. You, you know, t- so he called me Doug, Doug, Doug. And I finally said to my buddies, can one of you guys tell him my name is Doug, not David? Okay, can you do that? So in the ninth hole, he goes in and gets us nice tags for our golf clubs, Boca Rio, Boca Rio. So, I, you know, you could have them on your bag. So I look at mine, it's got David <laughs> McLean, M-C, capital C-L-E-N. So he spelled both my names wrong. He called me David. And then at the end of the round, the guy that invited me, who I thought, hey, this is unbelievable. Uh, caddy, invite, you know, beautiful course. He said, uh, I said, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. And he said, yeah, uh, that'll be $400. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so, so I end up costing me 400 bucks. Uh, and anyway, I got a tag with the so I said, I'm leaving that tag in my McLean. bag. At least they got I'm, your name right on the book. Don't get I'm greedy. back to PEI with that name tag on my bag. So just so I can tell all the boys what a big wheel I am in South Florida. <laughs> they don't even know my name. You know, so I have the Mario story for you. Now I got this one. Like, it's a disaster. Disaster. All right. (laughs) Hockey, John Tortorella, I'm opening it up with what you've watched this week between the Philadelphia Flyer head coach and their recently appointed captain of, what, four and a half, five weeks ago to be not only a healthy scratch once, but twice this week. Yeah, it's a, you know, it, I, I don't think we should be surprised when we we watch what has gone on. Like, I want you to keep something in mind here, okay? So, in his last days in Columbus, or his last year in Columbus, he wanted to move into management, okay? He wanted to move into management and actually move out of coaching. And Kekalainen wanted nothing to do with that. Nothing to do with that. He wanted him to coach. And then at the end of the day, it was a mutual parting of the ways. And it was, in fact, a mutual parting of the ways. Kekalainen didn't want him in management, and Torts wanted, you know, to, so he did, they both decided to move on. It will not surprise me that after this season, Tortorella will move into management with the Philadelphia Flyers. And that a guy like, keep in mind, Barubi may go there, Obviously, he's got, you know, Toronto if they stumble. But I wouldn't be surprised if Torts will move up. Mm. And if it's if Keith Jones and, and, and Breer are, are smart, they'll move him upstairs, I think. Because things go south with this guy. Nobody's denying he's not a really good coach. He's done a good job everywhere he's been, except in Vancouver, which was a debacle. But let's not forget Tampa Bay. 
you know, when they were a good team, Stanley Cup, Columbus, he kept them in the battle. He's done a great job in Philly. So I wouldn't be surprised this will unfold. I don't like what he did to Couturier. I, I think there's so many other better ways to handle it if he doesn't like the way he's playing instead of making him a healthy scratch and embarrassing him. And then he doesn't talk to the media. He refuses to talk about his name, his captain, who he named a captain, like you said, recently. I didn't like it. Uh, and you know what? They're they're in tough still to make. They're lucky the Islanders are awful right now. They're lucky that the Islanders have really stumbled. And Washington's hanging in, but they're probably going to get into the playoffs. I, just to stay on this topic for a minute, like you've been a coach, you've been an executive, like – the relationship between a coach and a captain at the top of the list has to be communication. Like you, you how, how do you end this relationship with no communication between you and your captain? I don't get yeah. it, Mac. I don't. And, and you know what? The, the one root, the one pro, the number one thing for a captain is you name a captain and the guy, the one priority I had when I was naming a captain is I wanted a guy that absolutely cared about the team, cared about the organization, cared about his teammates. That was the number one thing. And I had Brian Strudelin, who was maybe the best captain I've ever been around. And I was around Steve Eiserman. I was around Scrudelin. I had Luke Richardson in Columbus, who was a quality, quality guy. I had some great people. You know, I was around Rod Langway in, in, in Washington. Some real good captains. But you're right. Communication is the number one thing. It's the guy that you get the pulse of the team from. He's the head of your leadership group. You know, he's the guy that's got great respect in the dressing room. I suspect, I knew Couturier had it. I don't know where it stands now. And I know what, he got one goal in 27 games. I get that. I know he's had tough injuries. But this, I'm telling you what, if I'm the Ottawa Senators, I'm on the phone to Philly saying, what do you want for this guy? And let uh, Claude Giroux go, move him on, and bring this guy in to be around your young guys. That's what I'd be doing if I was Ottawa today. These are, all right, this is, Good stuff, Doug. I'm I mean, trying to help everybody around the league here. I know. Right. You're just a, a helper. You're a connector of people. Not, this is nice. I'm not happy my golf game was scratched today because of weather. Kippy was sending me weather reports. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't even I bluff, him, eh? I didn't, think I, do this. I didn't think I could do the show today because I had this golf game. I promised this guy. And he's sending me pictures of the, the radar of South Florida. Like, how desperate are you guys? Super By desperate. Today, by the way, I'm making more money playing golf than I am doing this Sounds show. Sounds like you're net work. minus 400 from what I know. <laughs> <laughs> you can ask him one more question about... Buddy, so we'll go. Okay, uh, just just between a coach and, and a captain right now in Philadelphia, is this, is this irreparable damage? Can they ever put this behind them? You know what? If they're... With, with a guy like Keith Jones there... And, you know, what I know of Keith and the way he operates and, the, and his personality, I don't know Briere as well. If there's a chance, I think Keith will try to work to repair it. I, I really believe he will. But, you know, if there's going to be a change made at the end of the season, I don't know. I'm just telling it's like my friend used to say, I'm not telling you it's the truth. I'm just telling you what I heard. You know, like just. Keep that in mind here. Don't don't run with this and you guys spread it all over. I'm just giving you my inside stuff. I think they'll try to repair it. I don't know if it's possible. You guys spread the it all over on national Sean. television right now. <laughs> I don't know Sean, but I know his dad. I had his dad, Sylvan, in, in Adirondack and a little bit in Detroit. Quality person. He's a GM of a major junior team. He's had a good career post-hockey. Quality fam Quality people. I don't get this one. I, there's so many other ways to handle it. And Dubinsky, I thought Dubinsky nailed it the other day. And I know he doesn't like torts. I know they had a big falling out. I get all that. But I thought he he nailed it how it could have been handled, you know? Now, do you mention Ottawa is somewhere for Couturier because that looks like the best fit? Or do you think that's something they would really do? And would the move be because of this rift with torts at all or just kind of those are separate things? I think I think they're separate things, but 
it's going to be, it's at a bit of a breaking point. I, I'm just, I'm thinking more of Ottawa. Yeah. Uh, Ottawa definitely needs some some veteran leadership in there. And, and for me, Drew's not the guy. I, I know Drew's had an unbelievable career. To me, he's not the guy to work with a Stutzel and around a ch Kachuk. I, I think they need a Couturier type of guy up front, and they need a similar type of guy on the back end. That's what I think they need desperately. And they got to move out. I mean, Zub and Bernstrom and move these guys on and, and you know, and find a goaltender. But I look today, they got a $10 million problem in goal with Corpus Salo. Like, what do they do with that? What do they do with that money? I mean, a buyout just will, will be a challenge. Does Philly want them? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> They're on I, a... I would try the Finnish Elite League or maybe the Swedish Elite League, but I don't know. <laughs> They're on a, they're, they've lost three in a row, Ottawa. Prior to that, before, you know, they had three wins, they lost seven in a row here, Mac. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I'm, this this was supposed to be the turnaround year. A new owner, fresh, uh, a guy that can come in and solve all of the problems that were apparently there with the late Eugene Melnick. And what, what has gone wrong here in Ottawa? You know what, I, I, I really... I don't know. I mean, look, uh, Norris has been a challenge, you know, a, a $8 million contract with, with bad shoulders. Who knows whether this guy, who knows where this is going. This was supposed to be the year to take a big step and their goaltending fell flat in its face. Yeah. They're, they're like, just think Gustafson's in, Gustafson's in Minnesota and has been okay, up and down and okay. And Decord in Seattle are two guys they let go that are better than, what they've got right now um you know there's problems you know the, the, a kid goes on waivers in chicago a defenseman they or a player they pick him up because he played for sales in in junior and they bypass clevin and a couple of good prospects in in the minors i mean i don't i don't get it but i'll tell you one thing this is their biggest off season in the history of the franchise well wow. this off season is the biggest in the history of the franchise, because they have, and they, they're going to lose a first round pick over the next three years because of the debacle with Vegas. And they've got to fix this. And this is a huge off season for sales and company. And, in uh, terms you know, of hiring a coach talking about land, is that related to this or we're just talking coach I, and personnel? I would say the land for the new arena is in La La Land until they <laughs> fix this hockey team. Let's not kid ourselves. If they don't okay. fix this hockey team, they'll be able to play in the rink in Canada. <laughs> or not Canada. Where's an uh, arm prior? They can play in the arm prior rink if they don't get this team fixed. They won't need one downtown. Is that dressing room fine? Everyone okay there? Have you heard anything there to sound like people don't get along awesome this year? I guess it's a frustrating season. You know anything? In where? In Ottawa. Arm prior? In Arn oh, Pryor. How are things in Arn Pryor? <laughs> I think I think that it, I gotta believe it's been tough there. But like Jacques's a veteran guy. Right. Uh, you know, Alfredson's a, is a quality guy. I, I gotta believe they would keep the dressing room okay despite tough times. Yeah. You know? They're but like here's the you you eventually run into a problem is Lack of playoff success. Shabbat never made the playoffs. Stutzel never made the playoffs. Brady Kachuk. I mean, how long can you let this go on? Mm -hmm. Look, I was with an expansion team, and it was it was not pretty. Let me tell you, it was not pretty. But not making the playoffs for an extended period of time becomes really tough on young players. And you know, it, it like you, you guys were talking about Max Domi. Max Domi was lost in Columbus. He was awful in Columbus because why? You know. He, he knew they didn't probably have a chance and he, you know, you lose, you lose interest. So, but it's gotta be fixed and it's a big job. It's a big job in, in Ottawa. What is going down uh, in, in your state of Florida here? A little role reversal here. The Panthers can't win the last three games yeah. and the lightning are on fire led by Kucherov with 15 oh. points in three games. Do you, do you believe that? I saw that this morning, and I'm and you know what? I watched him a bit the other night. I mean, this guy is scary good right now. How good is this guy been? It's unbelievable. But Vasilevsky, I mean, Headman, 
point. I mean, they're still a pretty good team, and they're thinner. They're not as deep as they were. They're a little bit thinner. Think about Paul. Think about Paul, the kid that they picked up from where? Who were we just talking about? Ottawa. Exactly. I mean, how much could Ottawa use him right now? Instead, and I know the kid that got's okay, but he's not Paul. Not for me. Not even close. Pinto. Sorry. No. It, well, Who? they got uh, Roy. Uh, Joseph. Joseph. Yeah. That's the Matthew deal, Joseph. wasn't it? Yeah, that was the deal. But I think it was. So anyway, um, you know, I mean, we're just as this show does. We try to help teams. You know. Mm-hmm, yeah, you're doing a terrific job. I think even Alfredson has had his fill of this group, I would say. Do you think so? He, he had some comments about oh, how they've it's asked been him hard if, but, as a first-time coach to, like, learn how to put together videos to put, to, you know, uh, an appropriate meeting they, for a team. It's a lot to ask. They, um, they asked him about, would you be interested in head coaching next year? Who asked him? The media? Yeah, the media. Yeah. I don't think Ian Mendez is picking the coach. Is Mendez is picking the coach. <laughs> I mean, I like Ian and I like Gary. But they're not picking the coach. Gary Ock and Mendez have a committee together. Are they going to be in the same room picking the coach, Mendez and Gary Ock? They're the search committee. <laughs> anyway. Listen, um, somebody mentioned to me that since Daniel Alfredson went behind the bench, they may have the worst power play uh, record since then and that should be one of his specialties is it not and that that gives you an idea of the challenges right now for a guy like that to go behind an NHL bench well look I as much as we all love Daniel Albertson and the career he's had and you can read about him in draft day about his draft if you if you really want to about how John Ferguson had to almost arm wrestle Randy Sexton to allow him to take him uh, you know but look the translation from being on a power play and actually running one on a bench is a, is extremely different. And he's an inexperienced guy behind the bench and there's not a snowball's chance. They're putting him in as a head coach with what they've got on their plate. And I love Daniel Alfredson. I'm all day long assistant coach for him. If that's what he wants to do or get into player development, but not a head coach, not in such a, not in such an important critical season for a franchise. Not a chance. So how, tell us the difference between, you know, when you're on a bench for a losing team, you know, how much harder is it than when your team is having success? You talked about Domi kind of getting lost in, in Columbus. You know, you see this with good players who it, it feels like if they don't, if they're not a part of some sort of chase, it, it's tough to really get traction. You know, what? when you're, when you're, I, from a management point of view and a coaching point of view with a losing team is, is unbelievably hard. And that's a management coaching perspective. It's, it's hard in the head. Mm-hmm. You try everything you do. Everything. But for the players, it's, it becomes drudgery to have to go to the rink. It, it really does. And, and their play deteriorates because of it. It, it just becomes a mindset and it's really tough to overcome. It really is. And that's why you got to give Tortorella credit for how he's turned around a, an awful Philadelphia Flyer team into a competitive group that won't lay down. And, you know, it happens to some teams. And, uh, you know, it's like Lindy said to me with the day after he got fired, he said, you know, we outshoot shoot the team 50 to 20 and we lose 3-1. We don't get a save. You know, it, yeah. you, you need certain things to happen. So Ottawa's problem started in goal. And then it spread from goal to defense to forwards. It just spreads through the whole group. And it's losing does that to you. We're talking to Doug McLean, former NHL president, GM head coach, and now author of a paperback. Wow. Just <laughs> thrilling. Absolutely. Your guys, didn't your guys, did your guys start as paperbacks or did you go from, uh, you were going to go from paperback to hardcover. I went the other way. Mine just a PDF, Doug. You can download it. <laughs> Doug, you can line the birdcage with mine. Don't worry about it. Hey, um, uh, where did I want to go before? Uh, I, I just had somebody, somebody just text me. Hey, David. Hey, hey <laughs> David. David. <laughs> David, let me ask you this question. Tomorrow night on Hockey Night in Canada, si- signature game between the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Edmonton Oilers. For the oh, Leafs, wow. for the Leafs, 
what does a good showing do against the Edmonton Oilers psychologically moving forward for them? Well, look, the Oilers are 8-1-2 and two in their last 11 games. Hyman with 48 goals. They're, they're hitting on all cylinders right now. I mean, McDavid, four assists. Dreisaitl, Ekholm, a star. A star Ekholm. Uh, they're hitting on all cylinders, so it's a it's a it's a big game. It's it's to me, it's like the Carolina game for the Leafs. It's a it's a statement type of game, and that's what they have to come up with a performance that that makes them feel. I mean, I look at the at the East, and I go Carolina, Boston, Florida Rangers, and I got the Leafs as fifth in the East. Guys, that that's that's frightening going into the playoffs. So a statement game against Edmonton would would be a big thing, especially with Marner out. You know, if they can get a good game in in goal, I don't know who's starting, whether it's the kid or Samsonov. I hope that God it's the kid, but you know, um, we'll see. But it's a statement game because the Oilers are they're tough, and they can be they can be down after two periods. There's no there's no quit in them, and there's no giving up because they know they can score. How, how important is special teams going into playoffs? Because the Leafs' PK is no good. The Oilers score like crazy. A lot of these other teams, Florida and Boston, and the Leafs might draw. Like, how important is it to be, to be a good special teams team? Well, it, it, it's real important. Like, it, it's really hard to score power play goals in the playoffs. Yeah. It really is because your penalty killing goes to an, everybody's penalty killing goes to another level because of second and third efforts on the kill. Power plays become critical, and they have to be hitting on all cylinders because it's much more challenging to be a good power play in the playoffs. That's why Tampa's had success. Yeah. Kucherov, Point, uh, Stamkos, Hedman, Sergachev, not phased by by the you know the great penalty killing. So it's it's real important to say the least. Does Hyman score his fiftieth goal in Toronto tomorrow night? Oh God, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Like Steve Simmons. What kind of column would that be from Steve Simmons <laughs> if he gets his 50th? What? Did you back off the media. They're just if doing I their jobs. Dubas, I, I, but if I was Dubas, I would have taken Hyman to Pittsburgh, <laughs> not Bunting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's he a little. He didn't, want, he didn't want him, but I mean, anyway, the kid's been pretty good. But look, hey, he's playing with some pretty good players in Edmonton. And you know the way this kid goes to the net. Is that true? Matthews didn't like playing with him. I mean, why? Who said that? Was I that you that said that? No, Kippy said that. Oh, did he? That no. off the record a couple of years ago. Oh, no. <laughs> no, Steve Simmons wrote it. Oh, really? Yes, that's what he's talking about. <laughs> hey, what's uh, what's going on with Sid this summer? Is he going to sign a three-year deal with Pitt or? Do you look into his body language recently? <laughs> I will be surprised if he doesn't sign. I've got to believe that that Mario and I mean, I've got to believe he'll sign a three-year deal and end his career there, won't he? But I mean, we've seen it. We've seen guys move on, and you know, but isn't it special to to be like Eiserman and finish your career with the Red Wings and Mario finish his career with Pittsburgh. Isn't that, isn't that special? Gretzky didn't do it. We'll see. I, just wants to win though well, that's too, the thing. right? You're so competitive. He's still so good. Like, can you just run? Did people kind of looked at Ryan Getzlaff and went, yeah, you're content. You're, you don't even want to get traded to a contender. You just want to be a duck. Like, yeah. isn't that kind of quitting on what? I mean, his great hall of fame career, yada, yada, but I mean, People see it yeah. as anti-competitive, I think. You know, it, it, it's really, it, it will be interesting. I, I, I'll i never forget, and I told you this guy, this story before. I went, I, my son was skating down in Charlotte on 7 a.m. with the college and pro guys. And he said, Sid's coming to, to skate with us tomorrow morning. And I drove down at 7 with Clark to watch Sid, Sid skate with the guys. I'm telling you. I watched for an hour in awe of Sidney Crosby. Number one, uh, Dion was on the ice as well, a group of guys like that. I've never seen a kid go that hard in an hour with a bunch of college guys 
And they told me that the respect, the way he acted in the dressing room with them, the way he was on the bench with them, the way he was in the drills with them was, was unbelievable. So this is a special, special kid. Yeah. And, um, and loves the game and loves hockey. I hope he signs and they get better. That's what I hope happens. But, hey, they need a lot of changes with that hockey team right now, too. Um, still- and I'm not helping them. I've helped, tried to help Ottawa today. Tried to help the Leafs, but I, you know, I'm I'm done. I'm not giving any more tips today. Is it still raining in Florida? Like, what do what do old people do when it rains in Florida? Nap. Oh, we'll probably catch a happy hour tonight. It used to be called <laughs> it used to be called the early bird special. Now they've changed it to half drinks happy hour, half price <laughs> drinks happy hour. <laughs> well, aren't we lucky for the weather today? I'm going to barbecue on the back deck tonight. I've got uh, a nice piece of meat there. We'll barbecue. Barbecue Jeff Rimmer one. again. <laughs> yeah, it's Jeff uh, Rim- Rimmer on the menu. <laughs> Jeff Rimmer just told me an unbelievable story today. He had he had dinner with uh, Chris McFarland last night in Colorado. He would have phoned Chris and begged him to take him out to dinner. I know this. I, I've been there. So he takes him out, and Chris McFarland shows up and gives him a Macar jersey. And I said, Rims, why would he give you a Macar jersey? And Rims said, because Cal and I spent time together in Calgary. Rimmer went to grade school in Calgary and got cut from the Pee Wee team, and it ended his career. You know, he got a stick tap in the ass, and they told him to get off the ice. That was the end of his hockey career. And him and Cal spent... Carl McCarr spent time together in Calgary. I mean, this guy's in, he's at, he's in Lala. Land. I'm scared. <laughs> you know, he's going to retire, right? You'll have, no, just, you'll have nothing to I, talk about when he retires. I just did a video for Columbus. They phoned me to do a video for the big board. You know what story I told? First time I met Jeff Rimmer, 36 years ago, he was the in-between period host of the Washington Capitals. <laughs> and I went in to do the in-between periods intermission as assistant coach. And I looked at him and this guy is sitting on the desk and he's got a raccoon tail on his head. He had a toupee on. And I, I couldn't stop looking at the toupee the whole interview. I'm thinking, what the hell has he got on his head? And it was Jeff Rimmer with a toupee. So that, I told that story on the tape. <laughs> <laughs> and wow. he, it looked it looked better than he looks today. <laughs> well, thanks for coming on, Doug. Guys, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Well, uh, we uh, do uh, too. We appreciate your time. I, I don't know where you go from a, a toupee. Is he still on? He's Have we got on. rid of him? We cut the feed. Hey, hey listen, <laughs> Matt Marstrom just sent me a, a text. Great segment, David. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. I'm really becoming famous. All right, this show. Dave McLean. Oh my god. Oh my god. I know a great Dave McLean from PEI. Is he serious? I know a real one. He he told that story for eighteen thousand people in a building I guess. to honor. Off Jeff the, we have off the rails Friday. Can he we get off him on life. to defend himself? Well, I finally? legitimately want to have Jeff Rimmer on. Can Next, we make it, that happen? It's time. Do they play Columbus. It's time for the uh, the journalistic part of the show where we do like the other side of it. Can we? It's right. time to bring some journalism. Can, in can we split screen them? <laughs> oh yeah, we could probably get that. Jen, we can and do just that, right? Sit back. No, because Doug will overpower whoever we put. <laughs> it's it's great I'd rather hear Jeff's side. No, Jeff's actually he can hang. He can. He can dish it yes, back. Yes, he don't nah, become friends not. with Doug unless maybe he not. can hang. <laughs> I mean, he just told the story on national television about how he had a raccoon day on his head. Oh, God. Uh, All right. What uh, do you got for us, Sammy? I, I, let's go to break, and then I'll do bet. I'll do game time. Torch right. is going to be a manager. Couturier at Ottawa. That was a hell of a bit. Ooh, maybe we'll get into that after the break. And Sammy's game time. When we return, the real Kipper and Bourne. Nick Cabrillo, Justin Bourne, Sammy McKee as we attempt to dig it out of the ditch. But he's got a long McClain. climb after that. Vancouver Canucks, a couple of wins. Game time first, buddy. Are we going to go over it? Okay, yeah. let's go. Game okay. time. 
It's game time. Presented by Bet365. Is it the app for latest odds? Find out why it's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 19 plus. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. Now, a couple things quickly. Uh, the Carolina Hurricanes tonight visit Washington. So Evgeny Kuznetsov did not have to wait long for uh, his return to uh, his former team, which won the Stanley Cup with. We all know the history there. So uh, I'm looking at a Carolina Hurricanes. I haven't done a same game parlay in a long time. Okay. But the revenge one, the Carolina Hurricanes win with a Evgeny Kuznetsov goal plays, pays plus 500. So, Ooh, wow. Not awful odds. I like that one. So, you know, he might want to be keen to stick it to his former team. They are not very good, as we, as we witnessed no. uh, just Wednesday night when the Leafs played there. So uh, give me that. for five plus. regulation for me, that one. And uh, I'm just looking at the Hart Trophy odds because we were talking about Kucherov and how ridiculously on fire he's been. Mm-hmm. Really hasn't shifted it much. I have it right here. McKinnon is still minus 180. Kucherov is plus 375, so it hasn't shifted it a bunch. I'm not wondering, the worst bet the way that guy's rolling. I, like he has 122 points in 68 games. Yeah, he's going to have like, I don't know, 150 points. I just, to me, I'm surprised that they haven't shifted that a little bit. Mm-hmm. And now that Tampa has kind of caught fire and they're heading towards solidifying a playoff you spot. Easily point at him and be like, that's, that's the guy. That's kind of the yeah. reason they're doing that is he plays a lot and he scores every night. So those are two things that I was uh, I was looking at. So there you go. All right. Just watching Carolina the other night, like their, their defense is led by Slavin. Yeah, it is. yeah, so good. But you know who's, you know who's sneaky good that I've never really heard of. Jalen Chatfield. But he's going to make a lot of money. Oh, he's UFA. Right. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty good. He defends. Scored the other night. You know who he with is? A bomb. He's like like a new Tanev <laughs> type of guy. He, he really defends. He's going to be UFA, and Caroline has already taken a couple of cracks at signing him. Oh yeah. Yeah, like for nothing. A million and a half. Oh, they're lowballing them. Oh, yeah. You know what's up? Oh, no. What they, like, is you got to do They, they lowball. That's what they do. That's the owner's thing. <laughs> Can't, you know, you got to go in there, get, you know, if he thinks he's worth one and a half, give him two and a half before people find out he's worth four. He may end up with three and a half or four. Yeah. You shoot right? Yes. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Or and they're like. That would free up Brett. Uh, they're Pesci. like diamonds. Yeah. In the rough, if you can get one of those for free. Someone's going to pay Pesci. Yes. Yeah, Pesci, uh, Brady uh, is also a free agent. Shea? Brady Shea. Yeah. So they got to win now. No question. Slavin uh, and Burns out a pair. That was Game Time, presented by Bet365. Visit the app for latest odds. Find out why it's never ordinary. Bet365 must be 19+. plus. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. It's text time, unless you wanted to say Yeah, I just want to mention uh, the Pacific because, again, oh, yes. a big part of our, our Friday show is teeing up the Edmonton Oilers and the Toronto Maple Leafs and just the Edmonton's push now. Can they still... Vancouver had a very good week against not easy games, lesser opponents in Buffalo and Montreal. Zadorov scores two goals last night. He's kind of sneaky sometimes, eh, putting the puck in the net. Yeah. But... The push for Edmonton to to try to find a way to close the gap on Vancouver is it, not happening. It ain't over. It, it's not over. I mean, they three games in hand. Three games in hand. And eight points back. So let's say they get a couple of those. Let's say four points, five points out of the six, and they're three games at hand. You're you're kind of right there. And they one, do play. One more meeting. They do play. With four games to go in the season or something like that, they have a head-to-head game. You know, the Oilers have been winning at a clip if they're up to, I don't know what their winning percentage is, but 657. They've been winning a lot higher clip than that. So it ain't over is all I'm saying. Yeah. I think I think it's just a too big of a number. Like, they're not going to win every game big, in hand. Yeah, and no. with the game head-to-head, plus the, their, the record that they already have, where they have the tiebreaker already, to me, it's like, I, I just, I can't see it happening. They... Vancouver had too good of a year for them to yeah. to crap all over it now, I think. So, Canucks are staying Van- up Vancouver there. just has to handle their business, right? Yeah. Win their game. Yeah. They got, uh, they got Calgary tomorrow night, Vancouver, L.A., Dallas, and then next week it kind of 
alleviates a little bit with two out of three against Anaheim and Arizona. All right. Yeah. There you go. That should be all right. Uh, I dug up this clip of Patrick Waugh that you were. Oh, thank you. You did. I did. I dug it up. So the Islanders blew it. Oh, boy. Head-to-head, Red Wings, big matchup. You know, the chance to really pull themselves into the standings race, they get thumped. I mean, really disappointing performance. Was it in? Was it on Long Island? Uh, Detroit, I believe. Okay. And just a heart, you know, heartbreaker for Isles fans. A lot, a lot of Isles fans are saying, tear it down. Don't even want them to come back. Now they're furious. Patrick Waugh postgame was like, oh, we were pretty good tonight. Do you want to hear the clip? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Let's, yeah let's play it. I'll say this. I mean, um, I thought we played well from the start to the end. Uh, maybe we, we squeeze our stick a little too much in the, in the first because we had two, three good chances. To, and then we didn't give them much. And then the second period, I mean, a couple bad bounce, you know, at the blue line, cost the breakaway. And then after that, I mean, a couple loss, you know, turnovers and cover. But overall, I mean, seriously, I mean, we, I know the name of the game is winning. But I, 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 I will say this, our guys played a really good game. I mean, you played this game again, and I'm pretty sure we would win it. Now, I didn't watch the game, so I'm not sure, like, where he's coming from. But not it's game. just, you just hate the fact that he's a kinder, gentler Patrick Wall. I don't hate that. I hate the fact that he clearly seems to be coaching his team in the media here to be like, we're okay, we're not out of this sort of thing. I believe in you is the vibe I get, which is, you know... A fine vibe for a new coach to... Maybe he just knows he's... This they're not that good. They're not that good, man. They, so, they're, they're in real why dump all over them or... Yeah, what's the advantage? I don't at know. At this point, a little more calculated in that instance. But he's... Their team's going to make Torts look really smart because it looks like the Flyers are probably going to... Unless the Caps, who stink. Yeah. They, they catch the Flyers. It doesn't look like... Because there's six points back now. I guess they have one game in hand, but... They're going to have to get hot. Yeah. They've lost a lot in a row now. Hey, speaking of French accents, did you happen to see Celine Dion read the Boston Bruins starting lineup to the Bruins in the dressing room? Wasn't that a while ago? It was yesterday. Okay, right? then I haven't seen it. Celine Dion is a Boston Bruins fan, which no, is, gr- yes, the biggest. It's greatly offensive. She's like high-fiving her, the, the Bruins fans around her at the game. What? No way. Yes, it is true. And also, it was horribly uncomfortable. Montreal to fans happy because, about that? No, I think it's a national dilemma, or at least a provincial dilemma. Hey, uh, Quebec. I have a French Canadian mother in law, Carol. Big time Carol Levesque vibes from Celine Dion. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, she she had a very certain cadence that was not sure. of the dressing room. It was like, let's go. I'm hungry. Pasta. Yeah. I was like, oh. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so when we. When we started our show, we th- kind of threw out, is our show better or, or worse when certain teams either stink or play great? Okay. And you got you got a lot of reaction off of that. Did you not, Sammy? A ton. A ton. Yeah, a ton of text. And the general feeling is fan bases, and we, we mentioned Toronto in this instance, that the show is a lot more, I don't know, followed? A lot more... The claim was that it's better when they lose, but the reality by the statistics is that's not true. People after the wins want to hear their favorite team get feted, get us to you know talk all all nice about them. But I don't know the text people claim they like the the it, loss shows. Uh, Nothing tastes more delicious than Schadenfreude. <laughs> Love the show more when the Leafs lose. When the Leafs lose, to listen to Sammy. Yeah, right. yeah. That, that, Cry. There, I, there is that aspect. You have become like the mascot for yeah. like when when people want to hear you, like they did with Steve Dangle. They want yeah. to hear you cry yeah. when things go wrong. But I feel like I have like you're the new Dangle. We're getting we're getting fired up for the big games. Like I don't think there's a whole there's a whole audience of people that don't really know how I act when it comes to playoff Leaf hockey, and they're gonna get treated to that. Like this is just the warm up. Treat is an interesting treat word. Absolutely. Word. Yeah, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but I'm a very sarcastic person, and yeah. treated to it is a very interesting yeah. word. So, anyways. Sammy will smoke All right, so you got others. some text questions, Sammy. Any half-decent ones? Text, let's have them. I'm just pulling through them here. Uh, talk amongst yourselves. Folks, uh, text 590-590. We got 10 minutes, and it's text time at the end of a Friday. 
Or we can just talk about Doug McLean and Jeff Rimmer's toupee. Sure. Does anyone do toupees anymore? They don't know. Isn't there? You, know, you should go to Turkey. Now they, they actually they can do, that at some point. do a really good job. Like, you can't hardly tell. Like, yeah. I can't tell yours. I know. No one can tell. Why, why does Kipper want to torture us with Matt Murray on a Friday? <laughs> we just got home from work, opened a beer. We don't need this. <laughs> of all the angles Kip takes, it's definitely the one I'm most like, what is he working here? That is hilarious. <laughs> does he get a percentage of his next deal? What is happening? That is so funny. <laughs> um... That's a Stanley Cup champion just, you're talking about, too. Just great, guys. Kip and Justin. Twice. Uh, Doug and David's conversation was so friendly and funny. My snowy QEW drive went too fast. Great show, guys. On a side note, boys, don't sleep on my jets. We'll listen next week. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we're not. Uh, I feel like we do a very good job of talking jets. We talk with the jets. We give them credit. We have Reynolds on once a month. We talk jets. Jets. I think we've said is the deepest forward group in the NHL. I don't know if it's consensus, but that's kind of my stance. And Connor Hellebuck. Yeah. I don't necessarily believe their D is quite where the best Ds are, but when you have Connor Hellebuck, it doesn't have to be. So <clears throat> they got as good a chance as any. Last night was a game that they lost 4 1 to the New Jersey Devils, but it was. Persuas, right? Persuas. Yeah. But he played well, too. Like they were right in the thick of things. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, I, I like the Jets. Throughout well, the I, hockey I, I game. It's not like they got blow. Like, it's just one of those where you can look at it and go, come on, you lost to New Jersey. But they, they actually, I, I thought they played a pretty good game. Toffoli and Monaghan changes how I feel about the Jets, and I do think they're a legit contender. I have an actual question here. Why does Pasternak get no love in the Hart Trophy talk? 100 points, 45 goals, 40 above nearest teammate on on the team. Supposed to regress, but still tops in the league. No pasta equals no playoffs. From supposed John to and regress? Hamilton. Why? No, the Bruins were. He is one of my favorites. The, yeah, Bru the Bruins were supposed player. to regress. I just, I don't think that he is a offensive guy, right? He's not like a penalty kill guy or a physical, you know, I know he throws. Oh, he's physical. Him, he runs into people. But oh, no, he's physical. You, if he's he not running here, people over, if you but played he's here, very... you, if he played here, you'd be all over him because he has nights where he's just like, eh, not many. But any, I mean, he's not McDavid McKinnon. He's not. Well, he's not Kucherov, and Kucherov, Kucherov is either, yeah. the winger. He's, he's the winger right now that's Kucherov's getting got all the love. Twenty-five more points than him, you know. Uh, sorry, but Kucherov he's does over pasta. Really good. He's unbelievable. He's I, really I'm good. not saying this to take away from pasta, but you're talking about the very best guy. He's clearly not it. So yeah. I think it just like he, he, he's he's him and. Nylander are he's, 90, 100 point guys who are underneath the yeah. big boys. Like Miko Rantan right? is in that class. Of, Leon Dreisidel's in that class. There's a handful of guys that are just up there right now and, and they're just underneath. Just underneath. Tier two. No, I'm not even going to say it. That's going to be a Leafs uh, past the question. Eh, don't change your stripes now. <laughs> okay, I won't. Uh, no, say it. No, no, I'm no, no, saying no, no, no. just be you, Sammy. Okay. Come on. Do you? No. I, I, it's a stupid question. I want to ask. It's about pa, about Pasternak and Matthews. And well, who, why are they even a comparison? One's a winger, one's a centerman. Yeah, but they're you know, like I guess Matthew Matthews is a better player for sure, no question. But like in a big game, who would you rather have? I thought that maybe was where you're heading with that. Well, who's had bigger games when they've mattered most in the playoffs? Pasternak or Matthews? I actually don't know. Has past had any big games? I have no idea. Yeah. 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 I'll take Matthews. Yeah, me too. But I'm just projecting ahead. And I think a lot of people, you know, thanks. <laughs> we are getting so many texts, I can't keep up. Talk, <laughs> talk about Couturier to Ottawa. I, I honestly can't. Couturier to Ottawa was just like a passing. That, that was really interesting. But it actually works to me. That works in my brain. Minus see, the money. I don't see, like this the money. See, this is where I see a fork in the road in the Philadelphia Flyer organization. And I. I've not talked to Doug about about the thought of Tortorella moving up, but I have heard that. The other one I have heard is is uh, Keith Jones and Daniel Briere absolutely love uh, Craig Berube, mm -hmm. and that one could be very much on the table if, in fact, that there is any change that they decide with Tortorella behind the bench. Mm -hmm. That that would be an easy fit for a guy that already lives there. Ruby does. Um, yeah. Yeah. Tom Wilson suspended six games. Six games. Yeah, that Thank one you for that. was Update. fairly easy to see.
Mm-hmm. The I, history. Yeah. I wrote about it today, sportsnet.ca, um, about how this is just compound interest punishment based on all the previous dumb things he's done. You know, like it's really going to come back to bite the Capitals of the third hardest remaining schedule in the NHL. They're chasing a playoff spot. The, the actual action alone on Gregor to me is like, ah, don't do that. There's just a couple games. But it's all the previous when you play on the edge and you can't stay on the right side of it, eventually you pay. And the bill came due at a really tough time for the Capitals. I'll always resort to my uh, the advice that Dale Hunter gave me early in my career. Grease people after they score? Every once in a while, you got to get suspended. It keeps them guessing. Yeah. But, I mean, he, I don't not... hate that. I, I hate it in this <laughs> moment for Washington. Well, Tom Wilson is not every so often. It's often. Yeah. Take the every Very so, often. Take the every so often. So is this his there. fifth or sixth suspension? Sixth suspension. His third time with an in-person. Didn't he three have... Three fines on top of him. He's a bad boy. Didn't he have a... <laughs> ma- did, what was the most massive one he had? Like 20 games uh, brought down to like 14 or 15? Didn't he have one... Remember. Didn't he appeal one and bring it down? I don't remember. He was... Will's, uh, for a brutal slap? No, that's the one that just no, happened. It was, I think it was a hit, a blind side A legal hit. check to the Ali- okay. uh, the head of Two. Oscar Sundqvist. 20 gamer. 20? Yes. You remember that? I, I don't. Uh, I'm the one with the concussions. How did I remember 2017? that? 2017? Probably. 18. Uh, pretty blurry. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, uh, Go ahead. Go I was just going to say, it was about if Kipper could, It's maybe it's an easy question, but if you were going to sign a one-day contract with one team that you were gonna, you played for yeah. and retire with them, who would oh it be? Gosh. Hartford Whalers. <laughs> you go out in Cooper Alls? <laughs> yes, Cooper Alls and Hartford. <laughs> Is it because you like the jersey the most? Yes. No, it's, I would say it was the Rangers. The one wow, that you okay. have the, the coverage Rangers from. Too. Yeah, they, the Leafs they took too? me golfing last week. Also, the Rangers. <laughs> there you go. Stanley Cup's not bad. <laughs> All right. But the Tom Wilson thing to me is, you know, every team talks about how much they would want him, right? And how much that it would be worth the trade-off of him getting suspended sometimes to have that intimidation factor and whatever. Yeah. But this, there is this, a price to having guys like that. This is the worst one for him he and the organization. He did, did he not? Yeah, he did. Well, I put his arm around yeah, him like he, he was consoling him. He was like, him. oh, you can't do that. That was illegal. I, I, you know what I want to do is give Gregor a ton of credit for like taking that hit and not rolling around like it Didn't even go down. Didn't even go down. Sat on the bench. Like a lot of other guys would have milked it a lot more. And they interviewed him and he said, I don't think Wilson meant to do it, meant to hit me directly in the face. He said, I think Wilson apologized to him on the ice. Is Gregor that nice of a guy? Now I don't like him that much. He's too <laughs> he nice. He's a little angrier than that. Yeah, I guess. He cracked a bunch no, of teeth. All kidding aside, uh, good on him for not yeah. rolling around like crazy because he didn't have to. Yeah. I, we just got this text. This person must have just turned on our show for the very first time. What are your thoughts on the Pittsburgh Penguins in regards to how the team is being handled under Dubas? <laughs> Let me refer hey. you to section 3.2C hey. of the charter, every which is we talk about him every, every day. news and notes for the last month. Yeah, just, just down. Going. Hey, buddy, just download any show in the up. last two well, weeks. It's not good. A random point in any episode the second hour. It's not good, as Brad May just said. Uh. Yeah, that'll be an interesting one as we see it uh, progress through the last, the, the next dozen games or so for Pittsburgh. And, like Washington, it, this ends their season, does it not? Yeah, yes. you know why? Because they're not good. So having a good player out hurt. Yeah, that's that's the end of them. Philly, no congratulations, OV. I just put you in. No OV, no Crosby. That's a different world. That is. That's a sad world. But you know, what are you gonna do? More sad about Sid. All right. Only sad about Sid. Yes, actually, correct. <laughs> <laughs> Only four go- games on tap before we kick it over to Hockey Night in Canada Saturday night. Our thanks to Doug McLean. If you get a chance, download this if you haven't heard it already. And Luke Fox. Safe weekend, everybody, and we're back on Monday.